Okay, welcome back. So where we were last time is we created uh, this program that makes two bouncing balls. And here's the program that does it. We made a ball class, and we have two ball variables, and we uh, create them with different initial positions and speeds. And in the draw method, we draw each one, and then we tell each one to move itself. All right, so if I wanted to make a program with hundreds of ball objects, this would still be too much work, because I would have to create hundreds of ball variables. So if you remember before we studied arrays, uh, an array is a way of making a list of variables. We're going to do the same thing, only we're going to use something called an array list, which is another way of creating uh, a list of as many variables as we want. Um, if we were making an array of ball objects, we would say uh, ball object, and then we would say brackets, which means array, and you could name your uh, array list. The equivalent uh, way of making an array list is you say array list, and then inside these triangle brackets, you give it the type of object you want to store in your list. Um, I'm going to call mine ball list, and I'm going to delete this. Uh, you have to import array list. If you hover over it in Eclipse, uh, you should be able to import it from java.util. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and delete the actual individual ball objects because I don't want to use them anymore. <clears throat> Let's do this though. Um, I'm going to create a ball object called ball here. Um, and I'm going to create a ball. Well, let's call this one ball as well. So this makes a variable that could hold a list of ball objects. Um, it's not actually holding a list yet. Actually, this is pointing to uh, a special value called null, which is what it points to before you've actually made a list object to store into that variable. And the way you do that is the same way you create any new object. You'll say new array list for ball objects, and then the opening and closing parentheses that you have for any constructor. So that's made my new uh, list that I'm storing into ball list. And now that I have my list, I can ask it to do things like I can tell it to add another thing to the list. So I can say ball list dot add ball. And that takes this ball object and it puts it in the ball list. Um, why do we want the ball objects in a ball list? The answer is because it's going to be very easy to go one at a time through each thing in the list and say, draw that ball object and have it move itself. OK, now go to the next one and draw that one and have it move itself, and so on. So uh, we're creating a ball object and we're adding it to the list. Here we're creating another ball object. And let's add it to the list also. Here inside draw, instead of repeating this for every single ball object, here's what we're going to do. We're going to loop through all of the ball objects in the list. So I'll say int i equals 0, i is less than ball list dot size. So what this means is we're looping starting at location 0 in the list. And we're going to continue to loop as long as the location we're at is smaller than the size of the list. And we're going to go up by one location every time. I'm going to create a temporary ball variable. And I'm going to tell my ball list to get the ball at location i out of the list for me. So I'm just going to look at each location in my list one at a time. And now that I've gotten a ball out of the list, and I've stored it temporarily inside b, I can do these same commands that I want to do with all of the ball objects. So I can say, fill it with that ball's color, and draw an ellipse right there, and then have it move itself. Um, and the first time through the loop, location is 0, so we're getting ball 0, and we're drawing ball 0 and telling ball 0 to move. And then the next time through the loop, uh, i, the location number, is 1. So we're asking the list to get the ball object in location number 1, and we're storing it into b. And so we're still saying fill it with b's ball color and draw an ellipse where b's x and y coordinates are, only now b is the next ball in the list. So it's ball at location 1 instead of ball at location 0. So this is going to do the same thing that we had before, only now the code is shorter. And what's nice about this is if we wanted to, um, Let's just make a whole lot all at once at the top here. So instead of two, I'm going to do this. I'm going to say 
uh, for i equals zero, i less than, let's make, I don't know, let's make 20. And let's make them starting at, uh, I guess let's do 20 times i. No, let's do, let's do 30 times i. And so that's the y coordinates. No, sorry, that's the x coordinates. Let's have them start at slightly different y coordinates. So let's do uh, 100 plus 5 times i, and all the same diameter, and all the same color maybe. All right, so what's happening now is I'm creating, uh, this is going to loop 20 times, and I'm creating a new ball object with every single loop. So this is creating 20 ball objects. And I'm changing the x, y coordinates where they're getting created. But I'm going to add each one to the list. And so now when I run it, we get a whole row of them, which is nice. And you'll notice that my code actually is shorter than the code for two ball objects because I'm using loops and I'm putting all of the ball objects inside the lists. So that's the power of lists. All right, um, let's, okay, I'm at six minutes. So let's do this, let's um, delete all this business. So I'm gonna start out with nothing in the list. I'm creating the list still, but when I run it, nothing displays because when it gets here and it says, let's go from zero to the size of the list, the size of the list is zero. So uh, this doesn't actually loop any times at all, so we're not doing any of this stuff. Okay, I want to add more ball objects when you click the mouse. So here in draw, I'll say if mouse pressed, this is a special, you could say equals true if you want. This is a special built-in variable that is true exactly when the mouse is being pressed. You don't have to have these true. Um, so this is where I want to create a new ball object. So I'll say ball b equals new ball object. Only this time, um, I guess let's make the fountain object. So I want the ball to be located. Well, here we could do sort of like a, a shower head thing. So I could make the ball be located at 300, 200, or 300, 100 with a diameter of 30 and an x, y speed of 0, 0. And don't forget, I've got to put it in the list in order for anything to happen at all. So I'll tell ball list to add the ball B. Um, and now when I run it, when I hold the mouse down, oh, well, that's not very interesting. So there's a whole lot of them, and they're all just going straight downwards. Let's do this. Um, let's give them random colors to start with. Or let's give them, let's give them random X speeds. So I'm going to create a new float called xSpeed. And it's going to be a random number. I'm going to cast it to float, I guess. I want it to be between negative 3 and positive 3. So I'm going to start with negative 3, and I'm going to add a number that is anywhere between 0 and 6. So if the number is 0, uh, my overall expression will be negative 3. If this is 6, then I'll have negative 3 plus 6 would be positive 3. So that's going to give me a range between negative 3 and positive 3. So math.random is between 0 and like 0 0.9999. So if I multiply it by 7, now that, er, oh, it's a float. Let's do 6. Okay. So now it's between uh, 0 and 5.9999, which is almost 6. So when I put these things together, we should get a range between negative 3 and not quite positive 3. Oh, and it's still not doing anything because I didn't do anything with this variable. How do I want to use this? Let's see, x position, y position, diameter, aha, x speed. That's what I want to change. <coughs> so when I create my new ball object, I want to use this random number to tell it what its initial x speed should be. All right, there we go. So now I've got this nice kind of raining effect. Um, let's, let's give it random colors. So I'm going to create three variables, R, G, and B. And each of these I want to be a random number between uh, 0 and 255. So that'll do it.
And now that I have my random red, green, and blue, I can say b dot ball color equals color, but instead of me giving it some numbers for red, green, and blue, I'll use r, g, and b, which are random numbers I just created. So that means every single time here, we're going to have a new number. Why does it not like ball color? Oh, it doesn't like b, because we already have a b for ball. Um, OK, let's call this blue. All right, and so now when I run it, cool. Now each ball is a different color. All right, uh, so that right now they're just falling. What if I wanted them to shoot up from the bottom of the screen? Um, actually, it's a really easy change. Why don't you right now take two minutes and try and think about what do you need to change? I'll give you a hint. All you really need to do is change the numbers right here in this constructor. In order to create, uh, in order to create what we had originally up here, which looks like this. In order to create that right there. Go ahead, give it a try. Okay, I think we need to change a couple of things. The first thing is uh, instead of starting the balls located at the top of the screen, we want to start them at the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to change this to be something like uh, 550, which is closer to the bottom of the screen. Um, diameter is the same. X speed, I still want it to have that range of horizontal motions, but instead of a, a vertical speed of 0, I want to give it a vertical speed of negative 8. Remember, negative uh, y values are going up. And so now when I play it, we've got that thing that was in the other program. OK, join us next time for how we can uh, continue to mess with this to do more interesting things.